Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege, and I want to try making a missile launcher. Now, there's a few small rules I'm going to put on this build just to keep it interesting, but I think I'll mention them in a little bit. So, let's get right into it. So, in order to make a missile launcher, I'm going to need a missile and a launcher. So I decided here to start out with the missile. Now in order to do that, I'm building up a casing. It's actually really similar to my shotgun video and I'm putting down a bomb in the middle. Now I'm also putting down a rocket here and this is sort of to show you one of the things I don't want to use. Now I could use this for my missile, but it'd basically be cheating since it already is a missile. So I ended up deciding I want to put down a bomb here and I want to use that as my main source of power. Now in order to contain the bomb a bit better, I ended up moving in the ballast quite a bit here. Now this test was sort of just chaos. Everything just exploded everywhere and I wanted a little bit more more of a controlled example of what was going on here. So I ended up just pinning this up in place and I put a ballast in front of the bomb and I just wanted to show you the amount of power this has. That ballast went flying out there. So if I can just harness this power somehow, I should be able to get some sort of missile. Now I ended up completely casing off the front and I just didn't want the bomb to fall out there. And after I did that, now is when I wanted to start working on the propulsion. Now in order to do this, you saw there I put in a flamethrower and when the bomb hits the flamethrower, it just instantly explodes. And that's basically the plan. I want the bomb to roll out of the back, hit the flamethrower and then explode and force me forward. Sort of a weird Orion Drive thing going on here, but in theory this should work pretty well. Though I was pretty happy about that, and to automate the system, I put in a piston. This just nudges the bomb back, and it ends up getting me a really good explosion here, and I really start launching back. But to prevent it from falling out when I'm actually inflate, I need to add in one more piston, and that's where problems started to ensue. It's kind of hard to contain the bomb and have it fall out at just the right time here. So adding in one piston to the front, it was binding up against it a lot, so I added in a long chain of pistons, and this did not seem to work. The flamethrowers aren't even on. It's only exploding because the pistons hit it so fast, it just instantly detonates. But I did notice that even though the bomb wasn't rolling out the back, it was still making me go forward. And that's actually really good because that means I might not need to have a weird dispensing system. And instead, I might be able to just hold the bombs in the rocket. Now, while I was talking about that, I also put a hole in the top of the rocket and I put down another bomb. This bomb, I'm hoping I'll be able to just drop right into place and I should be able to just throw it out the back of the rocket. I tried giving it a test here, but the issue is once the first bomb explodes, Explodes, the second one just goes off as well. And it's really hard to tightly pack bombs because once one explodes, it's just a chain reaction unless they're far enough apart. Now, seeing this, I ended up switching out the bomb for a grenade, but it has a lot less power and I wasn't really happy about that. But I figured if I chain a bunch of grenades together, it might be able to get somewhere. But the issue is grenades also will explode each other if they're too close. And it seems like about three blocks away is the best you can do. It's a lot better than bombs, but it's still not really gonna work. So I ended up going back to the bomb idea and instead of having a chain of bombs. Instead, I'm just going to add a second stage on top of the first stage. But before I do that, I just want to make sure I got this first stage looking as good as possible and started putting some wings on it. Now, originally I was going to put down actual wing segments as wings, but I've been told the propeller blades are apparently better. So I just wanted to try them out here and see how that would do. I forgot them all on, just made sure to make them level. And once I did that, I put down some in the back just for stabilization. And finally, I ended up doubling up all the propeller blades just because I thought there weren't enough. And testing it out, it actually did sort of seem to work. It launched it up pretty well, but I wanted to do a test where it was actually in the air. So I added on some flying blocks just temporarily to try to get this up in the air and it wasn't that great. Now the bomb went off too early so it's gonna throw off its weight distribution but it had a lot of trouble flying. So I added on some regular wings to the back just to test it out and it seemed to be a lot better already. But there was already problems because once I hit the ground and started to flip up all the propeller blades sort of got really weak and started to just twist wherever and that caused it just instantly stall. Now I decided to hold in the bomb just so I could get the weight distribution right on the plane and <laughs> that did not go so well. It just instantly nosedived and hit the ground. So I did on more propeller blades and I got a good amount of lift here. It actually seemed to be performing really well at first, but then it started acting weird. And a lot of the time it would just shake randomly and just do weird things. So I wasn't really thrilled with this and I tried adding in a flamethrower to set off the bomb whenever I want and that part worked, but it still was just being weird. So I decided to switch out the propeller blades for regular wings and once I did this, it was not perfect. It was going straight up, but it was performing a lot better already. It seemed like at high speed it was flying much better. And I also thought it it looked quite a bit better as well. Now testing out the bomb here, once I set it off, you'll notice I end up just flipping backwards and trying it again here, it ends up flipping me forwards. And this told me that the bomb was sort of awkwardly placed right now because once it goes off, it sort of just flips the plane wherever it wants. So I redistributed the weight and put it a lot more forward. And once I did that, it was performing quite a bit better. It was blowing up and actually pushing me forward a little bit and it wasn't flipping me up or down. So stage one actually starting to work. I wanted to add in a second stage here. And this is a lot simpler than the first one. Basically all I have have here is a bunch of wings on a few ballasts and I'm holding a grenade using a grabber. I also put down a decoupler and you can see in this test I launched off the decoupler and it staged a little wrong but it actually did detach the top part so that should work. Now if that completed I tried to take off here 
and it wasn't exactly working so well. But I still wanted to test out the top stage, and it detached pretty well actually, but I noticed it was sort of swinging back and forth a lot, and it didn't really have any stabilization. Now I was able to detonate the grenade, and that worked, it was a little underpowered, but it did work, and I thought now I might as well add in a couple more wings and start to stabilize the top part. It also streamlined it a lot and realized I'd get rid of two of the ballasts on it. This removes a lot of extra weight, so I should get a lot more power out of the grenade. And after I did that, I just started shrinking down the wings. Now, this doesn't actually affect the aerodynamics at all, it's just for aesthetics. After I got that all done, I got rid of some extra braces I had, and after a bunch of tuning, I gave it a test here in the air, and it actually seemed to be fine. The bomb made it go further forward, the grenade exploding sent that first stage off, and it seemed to be working. So, with all that done, all I have left to do now is work on the launcher. And this was a lot harder than I was expecting, because I needed to start out, and I'm using some half pipes here to hold in the missile, and I need to guide it out very nicely. The thing is, I want it to go in a very specific direction, and in order to do that, I need to hold it pretty closely. Now getting those half pipes in place looked good at first, but now trying it, it seemed to just grab onto the wing panels and didn't really want to work. So I decided instead I'd use some half pipes on the bottom like this, and while the first test wasn't so great, it did slide off quite nicely. And if I give it another test here, if I blow up the bomb, it actually flies off pretty well. Now my plan isn't to use the bomb to launch the missile out. I'm gonna use something else for that, but the bomb just works really well to test out here. Now seeing how well that worked, I got rid of a bunch of extra wood pieces I had and I extended out this bottom rail and added a whole bunch more half pipes. And with that, you can see it slides down, but it started to tilt to the one side. And in the second test here, if I try to pull it more, it almost completely falls off here. So I decided to make some rails for the sides of this, but I had to be a a little careful. I decided to use wood here, and I would have used half pipes, but I really didn't have a good way to attach them without them catching on the plane. And this first test, they were sort of just flying around a bit, and I tried it again with them pinned in place, but I positioned these a little too high, and now I wasn't touching those bottom half pipes at all. So I had to lower them a little bit, and finally after I did that, it was slightly moving down, which is good. That means it was making contact with the half pipes, but those rails were in place, preventing it from tilting to one side or the other. And I was pretty happy, because giving it a test, it didn't seem to have too much resistance at all. So I picked up all the half pipes, and I actually decided to mirror them and put a second set on top. And I did this to prevent the missile from flipping up as it gets ejected out. I hadn't seen that as a problem yet, but it was more of a preventative measure because I figured that might happen. And finally here I'm adding in some springs, and these are going to actually be to launch the missile out. Now at first they weren't great, so I upped the strength to 10, but they still seemed to not be great. So up the strength to 200, and it seemed to be about the same. So I was pretty confused about that, and I was worried that maybe there was a lot more friction than I realized. So I decided to add a bunch more springs, thinking maybe I'll get a better launch out of this. And it did seem to be a lot better. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but it just seems like more springs is definitely the way to go. Now, of course, when I attach these springs, I'm actually permanently attached to the missile, and I can't let go of it, so I need some way to do that. And my first idea was to make a guiding system so that it locks into the back of the missile quite nicely until it reaches the end of its range of motion, and then the missile will just carry on without it. So after I got this structure built, I wanted to give it a test here, and it launched it out, but it would sometimes blow up the bomb. And it seemed like more often than not, things were not working out so well. And worse yet, I had to add more springs, because I actually wanted more force out of this, and that just seemed to blow up every single time. And in the slow-mo here, it just absolutely mangles the back of the missile, and this really isn't gonna work. But I thought if I used decouplers, maybe that would be better. The decouplers are great, because instead of having a design where it's sort of pushing something up against the back of the missile, it's just gonna be directly pulling the missile until I remove the decouplers, and then it just lets go. And I actually got that working, except they had the decouplers on the wrong sides, they were staying attached to the missile. So I put the decouplers directly on the missile, and once they did that, finally here, I got a reasonable launch out of this, and I actually got the bomb to go off as well. Now it was still blowing up the bomb pretty often here, and I guess it's just the acceleration is really causing some problems. So I tried moving the bomb in a little bit more to help it out a bit, but if you look at the back here, it's just totally distorting, and that seems to cause the bomb to explode. Now as a quick aside, I also noticed the springs do this if you try to pull on them too much, which I thought was kind of funny. Anyway though, I shrugged the bomb here, and I'm hoping this is going to keep it off the walls and prevent it from exploding so much. I also extended out the barrel, which might seem bad at first, but it allows me to use less springs to get the same amount of velocity since I can do the acceleration over a longer distance. But it was still exploding. And looking at it closer, it just seemed like it was distorting a lot and also hitting up against the top set of rails, and that was causing the bomb to just get completely constrained. So I just got rid of a bunch of the rails and tops since they weren't really that needed. And while I was at it, I actually got rid of the grenade I was using and replaced it with a bomb. This was because I realized the bomb was a lot better than the grenade, and also it's so far away from the other bomb at this point that I figured I might be able to get away with it. And trying it out here, it actually worked. It didn't explode, but I'm 
not totally done yet, because I still need a way to blow up that bomb. And I was thinking of putting a flamethrower in here on the main body. And by doing that, I have no extra weight on the really small stage to prevent that from getting overloaded, but I'm still able to blow up the bomb. Now, finally here, I wanted to give it a test, so I threw it out of the launcher, and it actually just seemed to work well. I got all the way over this mountain, and I was really happy with that. But there was a small issue. I noticed that sometimes the top stage wasn't exploding anymore, so I had to add in a delay. This has like a tenth of a second delay, and all it does is make sure the flamethrower starts a little bit before the decouplers go off, so that the bomb actually has some time to explode before it falls out of line of the flamethrower. So of course, I'm going to need more of these, so I just copied it over like this. Now in this test here, I launched off the very top stage, and it worked out fine, and normally I wouldn't show all of this, but when I was panning back here, I was looking for that second stage went, and it just landed right in front of the camera, which I thought was really funny. But with that, all there's left to do is really change all of the keybinds for each one of these to get them separate, and also to make them kind of convenient to hold. Now you see here, I finished up the springs, and I'm separately able to launch out the bottom projectile, which is exactly what I wanted. But I'm not actually detaching it here, and in order to do that, I'm adding in a sensor. This is more of a quality of life thing, because once I put this in place, it's going to automatically toggle the decoupler so that I don't have to do it once it launches out. And this makes it a lot easier to control here, and it also means I have a lot less keybinds to remember. And you can see here, the double design actually worked really well, so I took it and just copied this whole thing over again. And now with this 4-missile design, I put it on wheels here. Now, ordinarily, I would have shown all of this, but it was actually incredibly laggy here. Right now, I'm at 33% speed, and also, it's just not that good. The thing is, there's just so much weight in this mechanism that trying to make it actually go forward and backward properly is really bad. And also, it's really hard to brace this whole thing right, and sometimes missiles come out really well, but they fail about half the time, and when it's just pinned up in the air, they fail maybe an eighth of the time. So that's exactly what I did for this next test. I just took it off the wheels, and this is exactly what you saw before. And with that done, I wanted to give it a full test here of each one of the missiles. Now for these first four tests, I'm not reloading the game at all. I just wanted to give you a realistic picture of how reliable this is. And you can see launching off this first missile worked really well here, and I almost hit a house all the way up here. So so I ended up just launching off the second one, and I noticed it wasn't going as far, but that actually was a good thing here, because I ended up hitting one of these tents perfectly. So this third one here is hoping to get all the way to the end again, but unfortunately when I launched off the bottom bomb, top one exploded as well, and that just caused it to become really unstable. So with my last missile here, I launched it out, and actually it wasn't that great of a launch, but I was still able to get the top stage going off pretty well here, and I almost got all the way to the end again. Now here I have a really good launch coming in. You can see I got a really good angle at first, it started to pitch up a bit, which means when the bomb goes off, it forces it further up, and the second bomb got it going really far as well, and the distance is there, but I was really just hoping I was going to perfectly hit a house. After enough waiting, I got it to perfectly hit this roof, and I was really happy about that. Now, I actually can launch multiple of these at once, but it's very difficult to control each one of these individually. I messed around here for like another hour or so, and have some of the best shots here. So guys, thanks for watching. I'm glad I got this multi-stage design going, and it was kind of giving me some inspiration to make a full rocket. So if you like the build, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and otherwise, until next time.